It's time to discuss the greatest fighters in MMA history, more specifically, the top 15. And the reason I'm making this video is because I just simply can't stand the typical copy and paste list that, you know, basically just has a bunch of fighters where everyone else puts them that will rank everyone in the exact same spot every time. Like, this is not about respect or disrespect. This is about objectivity, all right? I'm going to objectively rank these fighters and I cannot stand the old heads that are going to be, you know, oh, you don't know, understand how much of a monster he was. I don't give a fuck how much of a monster he was back in the 90s. The game has only been around for 30 years. I'm not going to be rating wins over plumbers that high. All right. I'm going to give you guys a carefully constructed, well thought out, objective list with arguments, with reasons. All right. I'm not just going to pander to old heads that I haven't even fucking really even watched fight in their prime just because we're going on word of mouth. No. What we're going to do is we're going to look at level of competition. We're going to look at longevity. We're going to look at win percentage and more. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Well, we may as well get an old head out of the way right now. Matt Hughes is going to be at my number 15 spot and we're going to work our way down to number one. But I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to give you guys what I am going to be looking at for the most part in terms of ranking. All right, we're going to be looking at best wins. That's highlighted in yellow. Then we're going to be looking at the losses. Then we're going to be looking at all time wins. Okay, does Matt Hughes have an all time win? Yes, George St. Pierre. You best believe if he didn't have that name on his resume, he wouldn't even be in my top 15. Now, why is that? Because his only other really good names that stand off the fucking board are BJ Penn, Sean Shirk, both guys, former champions, and Frank Trigg, who's a pretty tough matchup. That being said, BJ Penn beat this man twice, okay? Being one and two with someone isn't that amazing. So George St. Pierre has Matt Hughes clinging on for dear life to this all-time list, all right? Josh Koscheck, he lost to Josh Koscheck, lost to Tiago Alves. Sure, he was older on in his career, but at the end of the day, there's a reason why I'm not going to have a lot of old heads on this list. Look at the winning percentage, 62%. That's not that amazing, especially when it's like we're really grasping at straws to find your excellent wins. I mean, again, I understand the average title win was still good back then, but it's like, you know, we're, we're talking fucking plumbers outside of the, the, the names that we actually know. BJ Penn, George St. Pierre, Sean Shirk, Frank Trigg. I mean, who are we really talking about other than that? Matt Hughes is going to be at number 15. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt because he has nine title wins and he has longevity. But we're going to get on to the next one. And that is number 14, Max Holloway. What is most important for me? All time wins. You're going to see that theme throughout this video. Max Holloway has defeated Jose Aldo twice. Jose Aldo is an all time great. You're going to see him on this list as well. That in and of itself is amazing, but here's the thing. Although Max Holloway's winning percentage is 68%, and that's not that amazing, he's only lost to one man since 2014. That's Alexander Volkanovsky, and other than that, he is undefeated 18-0 since then in featherweight. Of course, he's lost to Dustin Poirier at lightweight, and we're going to count what's happened outside of the, that main division. We are going to count that, but still... You have to at least think that Max Holloway would be literally one of the most dominant champions you could ever even imagine if it weren't for the existence of Volk, all right? And losing to Volk, because you'll see where he's going to land, is not that bad. It's not that terrible, especially when he has wins like Arnold Allen, Yair Rodriguez. Those are the new era guys. Then you look at the older head wins that he has, Frankie Edgar, Ricardo Lamas, Anthony Pettis when Pettis was still really good. Calvin Cater, Jeremy Stevens. I know all these guys aren't old heads. I'm just starting to read off the fucking really good wins that he has. TKZ knocked him out. Brian Ortega absolutely schooled him. Jose Aldo knocked him out twice. I mean, are you kidding me? Charles Oliveira happens to be on that list too. Max Holloway is a fucking monster and I feel like he gets overlooked sometimes. I think most people would agree he's top 20, top 25, but I honestly have him in my top 15 because I cannot ignore all of this amazing work that he's done. And the Volkanovski losses just kind of skew his winning percentage and record a little bit. But take that away. He's only lost to Connor when he was a tadpole. You know, that was like one of his first fights in the UFC. He was like 21 years old. He lost to Dustin Poirier early on when he was a tadpole and then lost to Dustin Poirier in 2019. But it was an all out war. It wasn't like he got embarrassed. And Dennis Bermudez, literally like his first fight in the UFC, 
it ain't looking so bad. Max Holloway's at number 14. On to the next one. Old head Fedor Emelianenko is making the list. I think he's a tad bit overrated by some people, and this is why. A lot of people have this guy in their top five. Well, Fedor's got to be in the top five. Why? Because last time I checked, heavyweights, they start to decline later on in their career. You know what I mean? They start to decline when they're 38, 39. Fedor was getting knocked out at the age of 35. He was getting KO'd at the age of 36. I know this guy had a lot of miles on him. I know he was a beast back in the day, back in the pride days. But like, I do not think he's going to be top 10 worthy. His best wins, they're good. Mark Coleman, Andre Orlovsky. And we have to think about Andre Orlovsky, former UFC champion. Fedor beat this motherfucker when he was young, Andre Orlovsky. And even to this day, maybe not to this day, but as... As far as a couple years back, Andre Orlovsky is still a stubborn bastard to beat. You know what I mean? Mark Hunt, Tim Sylvia, Gegard Mousasi, that's a great win too. Mirko Krokop, Kevin Randleman, Antonio Noguera. Even if you haven't fucking watched Antonio Noguera in his prime, that's a great win. All right? Longevity is what is saving Fedor Emelianenko. That winning percentage is amazing regardless. 29 wins and 6 losses. Okay? 29 wins and 6 losses. All right. Again, the reason why I don't have him that high up is because I feel like he hasn't had any incredible, amazing wins. And it's because, you know, he was getting knocked out in his mid thirties. And I feel like, sure, you've had some longevity, but maybe you just started facing guys that were better than you. And you were beating up on a lot of people that were overrated and not that skilled back in the day. And at the end of the day, I'm going to favor someone like Islam Makashev over Fedor Emelianenko. I know some people just had a heart attack. I don't care. I don't care if, you know, oh, that's just wrong. That's disrespectful. Why? Okay, the last time I checked, Makashev, two of his wins shit all over Fedor Emelianenko's wins. And I'm talking about Volkanovsky and I'm talking about Charles Oliveira. Right now, Charles Oliveira, in my mind, is the second greatest lightweight of all time. Islam Makashev is a hair behind him, right? A one centimeter long hair behind him. That's it. Makashev's wins over Volk and outstriking Volkanovsky in that fight in a lot of their exchanges is insane, bro. Volkanovsky has literally dominated every single other person that he's ever fought. Makashev beat him. I think that has to be looked at as a really good win. If it weren't Islam Makashev that night, I think Volkanovsky is the lightweight champion. That's the thing. This is a guy that's probably good enough to be the lightweight champ. And beating Charles Oliveira when Charles was on that streak, like a 12 fight win streak, insane. And having hardly any issues with Charles whatsoever. And of course, I know he doesn't have a lot of wins that stand off the board anyway, but 13 and 1, 92% winning? Are you kidding me? Makashev is underrated by a lot of people, bro. He just is. He just simply is. I have to put him in the top 15 because if he beats Charles again, he's going to be in the top 10. I think that what I favor most is your best wins. And the fact that Charles has two in a row and he's racking them up very, very easily and he's just become a champion, bro, this guy's going to skyrocket. I'm calling it right now. He's going to be a top five fighter of all time. Other than that, Dan Hooker, Bobby Green, but he's running through these people in the first round. He's having Hamzat Chemayev-esque level performances against these other guys. And he's getting better. He's still young. I know he's been KO'd by Adriano Martins way back in the day, but 13-1 and one is a, an amazing record. He's taking out the current best fighters on the fucking planet. I don't give a fuck about Kevin Randleman, okay, and Antonio Nogueira in comparison to Charles Oliveira and Alexander Volkanovsky, all right? I'm not just going to put Fedor up there because some old heads are going to get mad. No, all right? I'm just being honest. That's how it is. That is how it is. Dominic Cruz, number 11, just missed out on my top 10. Why? Because he's been beat fairly easily by a couple of guys. I know that he took a couple of rounds off of Cheeto. I know that Dominic Cruz is getting older, but at the end of the day, bro, he got dominated by Henry Cejudo. He got dominated by, did not get dominated by Cheeto, but he got smoked and he got knocked out. I know he's past his prime, but it's just not a good look. It's just not a good look. Cody Garbrandt, that's the one that I really want to get to. Cody Garbrandt, that's the guy that I know he didn't completely butcher him from pillar to post, but kind of styled on him, man. And that's just not really ideal, man. Dominic Cruz, he has good wins. Amazing wins. Demetrius Johnson, TJ Dillashaw. That in and of itself is extremely impressive. Uriah Faber, Joseph Benavidez, Pedro Munoz. Really good win. 
had adversity early on in that fight, got dropped and came back to win. And he has an all-time win in Demetrius Johnson. So that's going to put him high. Seven title wins and the bantamweight GOAT. You best believe Dominic Cruz has to be on this list. It's just that I think he might be the weakest GOAT in any weight class. And I just think that's the case. When Aljamain Sterling is on the verge of passing you up and Aljamain Sterling has had a half-fluked title reign, you know that you're not really separating yourself that much. I just think bantamweight's really competitive and sure, that's the nature of the division. But at the end of the day, I think that we're going to have guys that are going to pass up Dominic Cruz eventually. But he is really, really good. He's really good. I just have someone like Stipe ahead of him. Why? Why do I have Stipe ahead of him? Well, when Dominic Cruz took out Demetrius Johnson, Demetrius Johnson was basically a tadpole. You know what I mean? Dominic Cruz got styled on by Cody Garbrandt. That's not a good look. Stipe got styled on by Stefan Struve. Not a good look. JDS beat him too. But it's all the wins that Stipe has and all time wins as well. Daniel Cormier, two times. Francis Ngannou, that's a top five heavyweight of all time, without a doubt. Not only beat Francis, but schooled him against all odds when everyone was hyping up Francis Ngannou to be the best thing that ever touched the fucking sport at the time. Dominated him. Of course, he got knocked out by Francis Ngannou, but, you know, it is what it is. That can happen. Junior Dos Santos knocked him out. Knocked out Alistair Overeem. Knocked out Fabricio Verdum. Knocked out Andre Orlovsky and beat Mark Hunt as well. Stipe Miocic, I'm going to favor him a little bit higher because I just think it's harder to stay on top as a heavyweight. And this is the guy that has set the record for the most title defenses in heavyweight history. Okay? That is insane. Six title wins, two-time champ. Four title wins, loses to Daniel Cormier, gets knocked out, comes back, beats him with one of the most clutch moments of all time with the body shots. Literally one of the most clutch moments in MMA history. Gets his belt back to rep for the heavyweight division. Not letting a little DC come up there and make his title wins look bad. And then he beats Daniel Cormier again, twice in a row. Six title wins. On to the next one, Kamaru Usman, number nine. 87 winning percentage, 15 and two. That's hard to beat, man. That's really, really good. Six title wins. Was a dominant champion. Took the belt off of Tyron Woodley. That's a top five welterweight all time. He's not going to make the all time list. You know what I mean? Kamaru Usman doesn't have any all time wins, but he has really, really good ones. Again, Tyron Woodley, Colby Covington. Say what you want about Colby's resume. You could just use the eye test and use the fact that Colby is dominating people. Even though they're all coming off of losses for the most part, he's still an excellent fighter, a nightmare matchup, a mirror matchup, and those are good wins. Kamaru beat him twice. Again, dominated Woodley, beat Gilbert Burns, a so-called nightmare matchup on paper. Jorge Masvidal twice. Those are okay. Those are okay. Damian Maya, all right? RDA, former champion. Sean Strickland. Now we can look at that win and say, all right. A champion. Sean Strickland is a champ. I know he was much younger at the time, but so was Kamar Usman, and Usman dominated him. The only losses are to Leon Edwards. One guy has beat him. Only one guy, and he's beat Leon Edwards. I can't believe I forgot to put that in his best wins, but he has a win over the champ right now, too. So Usman has to be at my number nine spot. You're wondering, where's Israel Adesanya? He ain't on the list, bro. Israel Adesanya has had too many close stinker stinkers. You know what I mean? So we're on to the next one. Big Daniel Cormier coming in at the number eight spot. Why? 19 and three, 85% winning percentage, six title wins, two division champ, longevity as well. Because Daniel Cormier, I'm not just looking at his wins in the UFC. I'm looking at the strike force wins as well. That's a fuckload of wins. And the only people he's lost to are John Jones and Stipe Miocic. And there are only three. I'm not counting the John Jones rematch because John Jones popped. And because that's not counted on any of the records, it's seen as a no contest. I'm not going to look at it too because that was an illegal win. Stipe beat him twice, but he also has a win over Stipe and Jones beat him once. But it's like both of these guys are on the all-time list. And I can look past it a little bit if you lost to the fucking GOAT or a guy that people view as the GOAT. He has a win over Anderson Silva. I know it was old head Anderson Silva, but at the end of the day, it's still a good win on paper. He knocked out Stipe, beat Alexander Gustafson, beat Anthony Rumble Johnson twice, one of the most dangerous men to ever walk the fucking earth. Rest in peace to Rumble. And also dominated Dan Henderson. A really solid win. Even though Dan Henderson was a little bit small, dominated Josh Barnett. And 
I'm not even getting into some of these other title wins that he has over guys like Derek Lewis, Volkan Ozdemir. Daniel Cormier was also just dominating everybody other than the fucking hardest matchups possible. Dominated Rumble. You know what I mean? Knocked out Stipe in the first. Of course, had a couple of tough fights with Stipe, but for the most part, outside of John Jones, Gus, and Stipe, DC was cleaning up shop. On to the next one. Anderson Silva at number seven. He's not in my top five. He's not. And I came to this conclusion today. You're probably shocked. And let me explain myself, please. Listen, I know that Anderson Silva didn't lose until he was 38. The winning percentage, I'm not even going to list it because it's really bad. He was 38 when he lost. I'm not going to take that away from him. But where are the good wins? Where are the all-time wins from Anderson Silva, please? I know, I know. Lucas, this is insane. You have to, it's Anderson Silva. Where are the good wins? I just really started thinking about this right now. For real. Rich Franklin? Rich Franklin? This guy's not even close to being a top 50 fighter of all time. Vitor Belfort? That's a good win. Chael Sonnen twice? Okay. That's all right, but Chael Sonnen dominated this man for like 23 minutes of the first fight. I know Anderson Silva got it done, but it's like Damian Maya, Nate Marquardt, Chael Sonnen, Vitor Belfort, Rich Franklin. These are the only ones. And the guys that I don't have listed as his best wins, some of them are actually embarrassing. Like these are guys that literally lost a fight in their UFC debut and fought Anderson Silva for a title next. Lost their next fight, maybe won one more and then got fucking cut. Like some of these records are embarrassing. I swear to God, they were just picking people off of the street to fight Anderson Silva. All right. So at the end of the day, I understand everyone has him in their top five, number three. I'm not just going to say he's up there just because. I think that Anderson Silva was really good. He was really dominant. 11 title wins, the longest win streak in UFC history. That doesn't mean I. it's disrespectful to put him number seven. He's the seventh greatest fighter of all time. There are just people that are better than him. Simple as. Again, dude. It's just a lack of good competition for the most part. Rich Franklin, are you really going to fucking look at this guy like he's a fucking beast? He's not, dude. He's not, bro. I know he was a champ, but like, come on, man. Nate Marquardt, that's just a guy with a big blockhead that's known for knocking out Tyron Woodley. Damian Maya, that's a good win, but it was a boring motherfucking fight. And it was not in any way dominant. So my whole point is, this is a guy that was knocking out a bunch of easier opponents for the most part. You have to give it to him. He was doing this in his mid to late 30s as well, which is pretty impressive. And I'm not taking away any of the losses. Again, he's lost to Weidman, Daniel Cormier, Bisbing, Adesanya. But again, some of these we can look past. I can look past the ones after losing to Bisbing. But he lost to Bisbing. You know what I mean? I can look past losing to Daniel Cormier in short notice. I can look past the Weidman 2 fight. But he got KO'd by Weidman for a low IQ move. And I have to count that shit, man. This guy was at my number four spot. Not anymore. When I was making this video, I had him at number four and I couldn't bring myself to keep him there once I started looking at Jose Aldo's record. Okay? Let me read these names for Jose Aldo. The Korean Zombie. Chad Mendez twice. Ricardo Lamas. Kenny Florian. Uriah Faber. Frankie Edgar twice. Former champion again. Pedro Munoz. As an older man, he beat Pedro Munoz. Rob Font. Jose Aldo was an older man, beat Rob Font. He beat Cheeto Vera in a whole new division. Renato Moicano knocked him out. Jeremy Stevens knocked him out. This is after all the KO losses that he had. But the thing is, dude, 11 title wins, 73% winning percentage, longevity, was able to keep it up a little bit longer than Anderson Silva. And just, again, let me just be honest, bro. I'm just going to find a random win. Chad Mendez... Like, he beat Chad Mendez twice. That's not even a former champion. That shit's all over a Nate Marquardt win. It just does. It does. Frankie Edgar, twice. Okay, Anderson Silva, he has what? Rich Franklin? Frankie Edgar's a better fighter than Rich Franklin. It's not even close. Jesus Christ, man. And then taking out really good bantamweights in the modern era? You gotta give it to Jose Aldo. Korean Zombie was a beast in his prime. I know he wasn't always absolutely mopping the floor with people, but there's just a lot more to look at and to be impressed with. And the title wins 11 each. So I'm going to put Jose Aldo at number six. I think he's better than Anderson Silva. I think he's displayed that. He's, he's He was really good after all the losses as well, okay? Jose Aldo, people act like he fell off after getting KO'd by Conor McGregor and getting knocked out by Max and dominated by Volk. He didn't really fall off that hard because he had a shitload of good wins after that. Three really good bantamweight wins. And 
the losses that he had at bantamweight Piotr Jan he gave Piotr Jan a war it's hard to look past Jose Aldo's longevity and level of competition man it really is he doesn't have any good all-time wins though which is something that knocks him down just a little bit but Anderson Silva doesn't have any all-time wins either let's go to the next one Habib Nurmagomedov is my number five greatest fighter of all time why well, 100% winning percentage, bro, is pretty insane. 13-0. I understand that people say that Habib hasn't done enough. Again, is 13-0 that different than going, I don't know, 17-7? Uh, All right. Okay, Anderson Silva has four more wins than Habib Nurmagomedov has seven L's. Okay, and I know they were all when he was old. It's Again, it's different. It's different. I don't want to be hard on Anderson Silva. I'm just being fucking honest, bro. Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, Justin Gagey. These are all amazing wins. Even though none of these guys are going to be in the top 15 all time, they're very close. Conor McGregor is a top 20 all time fighter, in my opinion. Dustin Poirier is a top maybe 35, 30 all time fighter. Justin Gagey is literally the best striker at lightweight right now. And these wins are just getting better and better as the years go on. They're aging like wine. Edson Barboza in his prime decent win people act like Habib didn't fight anyone other than you know fucking Connor Dustin and, and Gagey which is just not the case Rafael Dos Anjos former champion beat him every single round Michael Johnson that guy was a killer at the time in his prime like these are decent wins and 13 and 0 total domination one of the most dominant champions to ever walk the fucking face of the earth only lost what four or five rounds max that's really, really good. No all-time wins, though. Holds him back just a tiny bit. And just, again, three, or I'm sorry, four title wins in total. I mean, there are guys that have just simply done more. Like, for example, Alexander Volkanovsky, who was at my number four spot previously. I had him at my number five spot. I know he's lost to Makachev. That is a loss that I'm willing to accept because it was a very close fight. And Makachev, in my opinion, given that he beat Alexander Volkanovsky, and why is that impressive? We'll explain it in a second. Given that he beat Charles Oliveira and is 13-1, and one, and it's up a weight class where everyone expected you to get dominated, it's okay. And why is Volkanovski ranked so highly? Well, like Khabib, he has only lost six rounds in his entire career, and he's a striker for the most part. I know at this point, he's using his offensive wrestling against guys like Yair Rodriguez, but come on, dude. Taking 12 out of 15 rounds from Max Holloway across three fights is insane beating holloway three fucking times dominating jose aldo and out striking him every single round he held aldo to 29 strikes throughout three fucking rounds 92 percent winning percentage 13 and one and it's not a mockage of 13 and one where he's only got two good wins he has maxed three times he has jose aldo okay and jose aldo was still good i don't want to fucking hear it because jose aldo after that you know, beat a bunch of good guys, drop down to a division and beat a bunch of good guys. And before the Volkanovsky fight, he was coming off of two TKO wins. Renato Moicano and Jeremy Stevens. He beat Yair Rodriguez, which I think is a really underrated win. I know that people view Yair as a dangerous guy, as a really good striker. If you're going to watch that fight back with Volkanovsky and Yair, I am telling you right now, you're going to be disgusted by the speed of Yair Rodriguez. He is literally one of the biggest freaks of nature that we've ever seen in MMA. When Volkanovski and Max Holloway are shooting takedowns on, on you, you know you're different on the feet. Volkanovski was able to weather the storm from a monster like Yair. At the end of the day, that guy is a fucking bitch to deal with. And I'm going to rate that highly. And he just knocked Yair out, TKO'd him, beat Chad Mendes as well, knocked out Chad Mendes in the second round destroyed Brian Ortega, out grappled Brian Ortega in that fight as well. I know he almost got choked, but he beat him up, beat him to a pulp on the ground. And of course, we saw what he did to TKZ. Alexander Volkanovsky is my number four fighter of all time. And the one thing that I'm looking at for the most part is the quality of opposition. Quality of opposition and dominance is what's going to keep Volkanovsky the highest. Out of 14 fights in his UFC career, he has only lost six rounds total. And once again, I could already hear the people complaining, oh, Volkanovski can't be ahead of Anderson Silva. Why? Oh, because, uh, you know, we, we got to just rank Rich Franklin so damn high. You know, Nate Marquardt, so damn high. Dude, these are the best ones. These are the best ones. We're really holding on to dear life right now. None of these wins even come close to an all-time great fighter. 
all right? None of them even come fucking close, all right? Once again, Volkanovski has four all-time wins. On to the next one. Demetrius Johnson is at my number three spot. 12 title wins, okay? And I'm also counting wins in 1FC because honestly, take into account Demetrius Johnson is competing in a bigger weight class now. I know it's still technically listed at flyweight, but he competes at 135 pounds. That's what he has to weigh in at. He is very undersized for that division. He looks tiny against the people that he's taking on and he's still fighting good competition. Maybe not UFC level competition, but the guys that he's facing in title fights would probably be ranked if they were fighting in the bantamweight division. Let's just be honest. Maybe not ranked. Maybe not all of them would be ranked, but a couple of them, like Adriana Martins, who knocked Demetrius Johnson out in his first ever 1FC title fight, would have been ranked in the UFC at the time. Right now, he's getting up there. You know, like Demetrius Johnson, he's getting up there. But we're looking at these really good wins because I am going to be counting 1FC and I'm going to be counting the UFC. Henry Cejudo knocked him out. Adriano Marais beat him twice. John Dodson, Ray Borg, Kyogi Horaguchi, who is a really solid win, actually, if you look at his record, and Joseph Benavidez. Demetrius Johnson, man, the only losses that he has are from when he was extremely young. We're talking about him being a tadpole like he was against Dominic Cruz and Brad Pickett. And then the Cejudo loss and the Adriano Marais loss. But the Cejudo loss was a very, very close split decision that honestly could have went either way. Let's be real. And the Adriano Marais loss, all right, Demetrius Johnson's getting a little bit older and he avenged it and got two wins over that guy. So I'm going to be going for the longevity of Demetrius Johnson. That's what's holding him up so highly. But there's one guy that he could pass up if he just gets one more good title win against a really good level of opponent in 1FC, and that's George St. Pierre. And here's the thing about George St. Pierre. His longevity is really what keeps him up here because, again, we're looking at all-time wins. The only guy on there is Matt Hughes. He beat Matt Hughes twice. But that's kind of it. You know what I mean? Matt Hughes, BJ Penn. BJ Penn was kind of undersized, let's just be honest. Carlos Condit, that's a decent win. Michael Bisbing came back after a long layoff, beat him. Jake Shields, Nick Diaz, good win at the time. Nick Diaz was a guy that if you look at his record before facing George St. Pierre, I mean, the guy was like, again, 85% winning all of his fights. Sean Shirk, former champion. The losses, Matt Hughes, Matt Serra, getting finished by Matt Serra. Johnny Hendricks, I'm going to count that. That was an L for George St. Pierre. He lost three rounds, all right? We are counting robberies here. Two division champ, though, is impressive. 13 title wins is impressive. And the winning percentage, 20 and 3, 85% is impressive. Okay? George St. Pierre is my number two guy. The reason why he's not number one is because at the end of the day, guess who is not losing to a guy like Matt Serra? And let alone getting finished by a guy like Matt Serra. John Jones, who has only lost to Dominic Reyes. Again, we're counting robberies. He lost to Dominic Reyes. But it was a close fight. It was a close fight. The first three rounds were clear for Reyes, but John Jones stole the last two, the championship rounds. I mean, it was a 3-2, 48-47 decision fight. He's not getting finished at all. And he's not getting finished by fucking Matt Serra, bro. Two division champ, all right? Cyril Gaon is a okay win, all right? I know Cyril Gaon looked like he didn't want to be there that night. He didn't have any hustle to get up to his feet, but it's still a decent win. John Jones was coming off of a long layoff. 14 title wins. 95% winning percentage, bro. I don't, I honestly don't think it's a competition, guys. I know George St. Pierre has some decent wins. John Jones's are just simply better. And we're not even talking about the dinosaurs of the past that were really, really undersized. Because when John Jones first burst onto the scene, he was fighting a bunch of guys that should have been middleweights. Let's be honest. You know, we're talking about Rashad Evans, Rampage Jackson. They were competing in a weight class that necessarily wasn't actually theirs. Clover Teixeira, future champion. You know what I mean? Well, not future champion right now, but he went on to be a champ. John Jones dominated him. Pillar to post. Beat Clover Teixeira in that dirty boxing range. Leota Mishida slumped him out, slept him. Vitor Belfort, okay, decent win. Just decent win. Shogun Rua, undersized, but still a guy that was overall pretty good win. Gustafson twice, finished Gustafson the second time. Daniel Cormier, all right? Daniel Cormier is an all-time fighter. I'm telling you right now, John Jones has to be number one. If he's not, then you're going to be taking into account guys that have popped. But it's like, bro, I, I can't have GSP ahead of him. I can't. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time.
What's up guys, it's Lucas Tracy MMA, and I'm wondering if you're trying to look like Yoel Romero. Well, if you don't have his genetics, that's impossible, but I could at least help you get halfway there with my ultimate lifting program, and if you're a beginner, my novice lifting program. These are programs that I've used my nine years of experience in the gym to make so that you can put on as much muscle as possible in as little amount of time as possible. And it'll also give you a variety of workouts so that you never get tired of the gym. So if you're interested, click the link in my description. And for a discount, use code MMA for 30% off.